He's only two. And the big one's Cease. He's a bull seal. Well, um, see ya. Thought you'd be here. She back again. Every day this week. And the week before that. Weird. This is a mess. Mrs. Watson is sick. What do you expect me to do about it? Hello, Mrs. Spencer. Hello, Susie. Nick. I heard your housekeeper wasn't well, so I thought I'd drop in. Some soup and some Irish stew. We can't have you going hungry, can we? We wouldn't. Uh, thanks. We're okay. Really, yes. Lynette, you're fine. Well, obviously your poor father can't be expected to cope all on his own. It's the least that Mr. Spencer and I can do. By the way, where is Dr. Mitchell? Oh, one of the baby antelopes hurt itself. He's still at the clinic. Oh. But I disagree. Come on, Julie. Look, we've had this argument before. You know, as well as I do, that if an animal gets sick, then we have to give it the will to live. Now, that means personal attention. Call it love, if you like. Professor Zeisman at university says it's a mistake to treat wild animals like domestic pets. You can't just treat them like a machine that needs a, a tune-up and a bit of oil. I know that. But then what? They go back with the others, they miss the human contact. Well, they're not wild animals anymore. <laughs> have you taken a look at our gorilla lately? If you like, I'll let you give me his next lot of shots. Give you a new definition of wild animal. You know what I mean. Of course. But zoos exist so that people can have contact with wild animals. See them, smell them, even talk to them. Now, lonely kids come here and find a friend. Hello, back again. Thanks, love. Fact is, Bennett, the um, wife tells me the Mitchell place is an utter shambles. Is that so, Mr. Spencer? Why don't we go up to my office? Our oh, wretched children, they shouldn't be allowed in here without an adult, I say. Make a real pest of themselves. Mark, you get back here. Mark! Mark! I told you to come along. But let go. It's gone. Well, it just serves you right now. Get going. Don't touch it. You'll choke. 
They're never around when you need them. Where's the keeper? Oh, well. Here goes. Hello, pretties. Remember me? What the hell do you think you're doing? Get out of there at this minute! I wasn't doing anything wrong. It was the ball. I was trying to get it back. Come on, come on, hurry up. Anything I can do, Harry? Call her down inside the pool. Up to some mischief or other. I wasn't doing anything wrong. A kid threw a ball into the pool. And I was afraid one of the seals would swallow it. Why didn't you look for a keeper? That's what we are here for, okay? There was nobody about. And I couldn't risk. There wasn't time. There's never enough time. <laughs> Women. She's a charming woman. The wife's sister, actually. She'll take care of that Mitchell family as if it were her very own. Very kind of you, Mr. Spencer. Ian, can you spare it? Oh, look, I'm sorry. I'll come back later. Julie. Uh, Julie. Come in. I'd like your opinion. Mr. Spencer has kindly offered to pay for a living housekeeper for Mitch. Oh. I thought, uh... Well, I mean, Lynn Watson manages quite capably. I know she's sick. My wife's it? checked into all that. She cooks for them five nights a week and cleans the house. I'm thinking of something more... Permanent. It's very generous of you. Mr. Spencer suggested an allotment of funds from the Spencer Trust. Oh, I see. Ah, well, it's a worthy cause. Myrtle can look after those children and leave Mitchell free to take care of the animals. Myrtle? Mr. Spencer's sister-in-law. Oh! <laughs> I'll definitely get back to you about that, Mr. Spencer. Just point out the advantages to Mitchell. I'm sure he'll jump at the idea. Besides, bad for the zoo's image for the man to live in a pigsty. Well, must go. Things to do. He'll jump all right at your throat. Why, you don't think Mitch would like to have a housekeeper? Spencer's tame spy, right there in his own house. Well, what do you think? You have a suspicious nature, Julie. It's obvious. He gets to offload his sister-in-law, who probably makes Darth Vader look like Santa Claus, and saves himself money by paying her allowance out of the Spencer Trust. You must be joking. Why do I always fall for it? Because I'm so lovable. Now, what are we going to do about it? When Spencer strikes, Mitchell kids call it a code red. Everyone knows that. Leave it to me. And over here's where they thaw out the fish for the seals. And the otters, of course. Why is that poor little otter in the pen by itself? <laughs> because that poor little otter would tear down a female out of pieces if she was given half a chance. I made her cry. I didn't mean to upset her. Julie, would you... would you explain for me? You know. Didn't mean it. Sure. Oh, I almost forgot. Look at a code red. Where? Mitch's place. Five o'clock. Right. See you then. I didn't mean to do anything wrong. Honestly. Harry knows that. He's very sorry he upset you. His bark is worse than his bite. Like sis, the old bull seal. You should see him first thing in the morning. He buries his head off if you're five minutes late with his fish. You know, that's an idea. Why don't you come down early one morning and watch what happens? I'd love to. Do you think I could? As long as it's all right with your parents, of course. Oh, he won't care. What about the keeper? You leave Harry to Julie and me. Hey, Pippa. Code red, Mitch's place, five o'clock, pass it on. Okay. All right. Sorry, Tim, I haven't got time, though. What's happening? Nothing to do with you.
Timothy Bond to base, keeping an eye on spies. We feed the seals at 8 sharp. Don't be late. I won't. And thanks. Not today, Tim. I'm too busy. See you tomorrow, then. Bye. Who's that Meg's father? I don't know. Didn't look like it. I mean, she didn't say hello or anything. Like he was just a driver. Maybe she's got her own show. <laughs> Yeah. All right. Suppose you can help. Terrific. See you then. Hi, Tim. Escorting your funny friend off the premises before she kidnaps your favourite seal. She's not like that. Anyway, how did you know? De jungle drums, honey. De jungle drums. Come on. We've got work to do. Huh? Code red at our place. Code red? What's Mr. Spencer done now? So, unless we want a dragon lady of Spencer's choosing right in our own backyard, we'd better get to work. They'll be here in an hour. Go. So Mitch suggested putting more crushed rock in the surface of the giraffe enclosure. Well, it acts as a kind of natural nail file, you see. No more hoof problems. How do you manage with your housekeeper away ill, Dr. Mitchell? Here they come. Hi, Dad. Hello. Whose birthday have I forgotten? It's all right. Nobody's. We just thought we'd invite some friends over. Well, that's all right, then. <laughs> well, now, Mr. Spencer, what did you want to talk to me about? Uh, it, uh, n n n nothing that won't wait, Mitchell. Nothing that won't wait. Come along, Mavis. Things to do. Things to do. Yes, dear. <laughs> because you're here. Look at that. Some people reckon they're really human, you know. What? Seals? How? Sort of in disguise. Bewitched. And once a year, they're set free. Oh, yeah? What happens then? They dance. They turn back into people. And they dance. And if you see them, you go with them. And become one of the Selkie folk, too. Unless you find the seal's pelt before the sunrise, and now if you do, he has to stay and become your own true love. You're a bit wet and fishy, I reckon. Yeah? Hello. <laughs> Hi. Hello, you must be Meg. Hello. How do you know about the Selkie folk? I once worked with a man who came from Stronzi. Couldn't wait to get back there. He said that there were more seals than people and that the seals were better company. Where's Stronzi? In the Orkneys, top end of Scotland. But these are a different kind of seal. That's right. Smaller eyes, for one thing. That one's swimming with her eyes almost shut. She was yesterday, too. You sure? Meg's been here every day this week, Dan. I'd better check that out. Uh, I'll see you later. Turning into people, eh? Can you imagine it? Come on, girls, off with the fur coats and pow! <laughs> if you were a seal, would you like to look at white concrete all, all day? All right, hold it, hold it. What's actually happened? Eye problems. We're going to need extra salt in the pool for a couple of weeks. Say, a hundred pounds a day. First load will be here this afternoon. Hi. Oh, hello. What were you singing? Oh, just a song from Stromzo. The mothers sing it to their children when the boats are put out to sea. 
I've never heard it. It's about the Selkie folk, the seal people. <laughs> It'll never make the top ten. On Orkney, they say that seals are the souls of drowned sailors. That's why their eyes are so sad. They can't come home. You can go to them, but they can't come to you. You don't really believe all that, do you? I mean, it's only a story. But the seals like it. Look. Maybe they're saying thanks. What for? Spotting the eye trouble. Is it anything serious? Not if it's caught in time. Sometimes it can be the stuff they use to keep the water clean. The seals get sore eyes. Like kids who swim too much. Only seals can't wear goggles. Well, how will they treat them? Will it hurt? Dump a great heap of salt in the water. A bit's in there already. The seals love it. Reminds them of the sea. Want to come to my place? Dad would like to thank you. There's even chocolate cake we went out for especially. All right, thanks. I like your dad. He's nice. Yeah, he's all right. Since Mum died, we've really got to know each other. Before that, he was away such a lot and hardly ever saw him. Now we're good mates. Meg, what's the matter? What did I say? Not your fault. Sorry, I can't. Got to go. Excuse me, Mr. Bennett. Yes, Anne. This gentleman's worried about his daughter. He's been waiting to pick her up. We can't find her anywhere. Well, perhaps she left early, Mr. Uh, McLeod. Gavin McLeod, I don't think so. Besides, nobody saw Meg go. Did you say Meg? That's right. About 12, uh, brown hair, brown eyes. <laughs> well, that's all right then. She's with my daughter. They've probably forgotten the time. In fact, I'm supposed to be joining them. I'll show you the way. See you later. Probably blissed out on chocolate cake and pop music. You know what kids are like. She got all tearful again. Ask Susie. Nick! Now, what happened? I don't know. One minute we were talking and the next minute she rushed off. You'll probably find her at home, Mr. McLeod. Now, perhaps your wife picked her up early. My wife died two months ago. She went sailing. She never came back. Meg's been a different girl since the accident. We hardly talk. She's, uh, oh, cut herself off, I suppose. As if she blames me. Frankly, I don't know what to do. It's hard to come to terms with. I know. You too. Three years ago. I wanted to take Meg away for a while. Anything to give us time. I should have gone with your daughter. Susie didn't think so. I trust her instincts. Besides, we know this place backwards. If Meg's hiding, Susie will find her. It's just that I feel so helpless. If anything happens to Meg, she's all I've got left. He hates me. Meg, that's silly. He's in our house now. He's terribly worried about you. When my mum died, it's like everything stops. Like those dreams where you're lost and you can't wake up. It gets easier, honest. It's not the same. Why not? You don't understand. He hates me. He's your father. Why should he hate you? What happened? Was it when your mother died? Don't talk about it. I don't want to talk about it. Your father said she drowned. I was supposed to go with her. We often went sailing. The two of us. She'd tell me stories. We were going back to Stronsay next year to see the seals. We had a fight. I can't even remember what it was about. And she went out on her own. They found the boat. She's with the seals. Well, how do I 
I get through to her? Talk to her. Don't be afraid to let your feelings show. That's what I found hard. You... So busy holding yourself in, it looks as though you don't care. You feel you want to cry, then... then cry. You'll feel better and so will she. Maggie? I found her, but she won't come. Yeah? Why not? What's happened? She's at the seal pool. Come on, man. Now, wait a minute. Susie, what is it? She's strange. She thinks you blame her for her mother's death. She says you hate her. I thought you'd better know. Meg! Maggie, where are you? Over there. Maggie! Are you all right? Round the back, Susie will show you. Hello, Meg. Sorry you missed out on the chocolate cake. Maybe next time, eh? Did Susie tell you how grateful I was to you for spotting that eye trouble? Bit of a problem with seals, you know, it's, it's hard to tell if they're in pain. If they show that they're weak, the sharks get them. So just pretend that everything's all right. A bit like people. There are no sharks here, Maggie. Only us. Maggie, don't leave me. You're all I've got left. But if I'd gone with her... I might have lost you both. I miss her so much. So do I, my hand. So do I. Come on, Meg. I need you. I'm not. I can't make it up to you. We'll try to make it up to each other. Please. Meg. So they've made a good start. They're talking to each other and listening. I think she still hopes her mother will just turn up one day. So does he. At least we had the chance to say goodbye. It takes time. Yeah. And hard work. Lots of hard work. Which reminds me, I thought the house looked a bit tidy last night. Terribly tidy. Not like us at all. I never did find out why Mr. and Mrs. Spencer paid us a call. Shall we tell him? Why not? Well, Dad, it's like this. <laughs>